Good morning, class. It's again a pleasure to interact with you for the first time in your second semester of second year as you are starting on this course unit of basic principles of microbiology, systemic bacteriology, and mycology. It's quite interesting. You're the first cohort to have this course unit. Those ones who came before you had the general course unit named General Principles of Microbiology and Immunology. It was quite wide, by the way. So you are blessed to start on this one, which has been fragmented to give you more focus. So this morning, I'm excited to take you through the overview on bacterial genetics. And like uh, I had much earlier on shared on your learning management system, the intended learning outcomes, and all you are expected to understand and read about in this course unit or this particular topic. This morning, I just have an overview. My names remain those ones which you know very well, Dr. Gavamukuya Yahaya. Thank you. Let's get started. So, by the end of this topic, which according to the chronology is topic five in this course unit, you should be able to one, recall the structure and function of DNA and RNA, very important. Then recall the underlying principles of the genetic code. This you studied again in your first year exhaustively. You must also be in position to understand the process of replication in prokaryotes. Then explain transcription, translation, and protein synthesis in prokaryotes. And after doing that, we expect you to explain gene regulation in bacteria. And here we shall focus on the operon systems. Quite interesting. And I don't think it's the first time you're encountering this. So we are actually doing a general previews, or overviews of what we learned much earlier. So as it is bolded, we expect you to explain the genetic flow and genetic change in bacteria. And to be very specific, this particular session will focus on this particular learning outcome. And then we should also understand and explain the applications of plasmids, restriction enzymes, transposable genetic elements, and cloning vectors in bacteriology and human health. So that we have the overall picture of their applications and utilization. Uh, as we proceed, some people might be asking, why do we study bacterial genetics? The answer is very simple, as simplified as it is, though complex in details. Bacterial genetics is the foundation of the modern genetic engineering and molecular biology. This you must be aware of. If any of your people, if you are yourself, you are taking any medication, for insulin, for example, this has been genetically engineered using bacteria. The number of other substances which are also engineered, as we shall come to learn, or as you will present to us in your assignment later on. And also, the best way to conquer bacterial disease is to understand bacteria first. It's like the saying that. He, Understand your friends, but to be very successful, try to understand your enemies better. Interesting. Fast forward. There are many ways in which genetic information flows. It can flow within the generations and also between generations. And if it's flowing between generations, we expect that at every subsequent replication or reproduction, genetic information is shared among the recipients. Again, when you are to look at the flow, when we are to look at the genetic flow within a generation, that one happen is in a very special way. We move from one cell to another, to another through the protein synthesis mechanisms. And the genetic information is passed on between each replication, as opposed to where we have within generations. 
but uh, what I want us to look at now is something very, very simple and straightforward. What are the ways in which bacteria exchange the genetic material? It's not like any humans, by the way, which I'm sure you're very well conversant with. So, bacteria exchange genetic material in basically two ways. That's through genetic recombination, where there's transfer of DNA from one organism, which is a donor, to another organism, which is a, a recipient. And the transferred donor DNA may then be integrated into the recipient's nucleoid by various mechanisms, and this can be homologous or non homologous. What do we mean by homologous recombination? Here, DNA sequences have entirely or nearly the same nucleotide sequences. They are exchanged by means of recombinant A proteins. We are going to look at this in a short while. And what happened that it involves breakage and reunion of paired DNA fragments. Simple. And in bacteria, there are basically three natural mechanisms through which genetic recombination occurs. And these are transformation, transduction, and conjugation. If there's anything you have to take out from this lecture, it's these three. That they are mechanisms and they are transformation, transduction, and conjugation. We are briefly going to look at what each of these entails. So, there's a classical experiment that was conducted by science called GRIF. GRIF undertook these experiments. I've uploaded on your elements a video demonstrating this experiment in details. So here we're just going to look at some highlights. So we have an understanding that pathogenic bacteria have per capsules. Yet non-pathogenic bacteria do not have capsules. And this also determines the shape or the smoothness. Some of them are smooth, some are rough. So I would ask which ones are rough and which ones are smooth. To understand this, you must have read or watched the video I've uploaded. Anyway, moving forward, the experiment involved injecting what we call live pathogens, live nanopathogens, dead pathogens, and live pathogens plus dead nanopathogens. And what happened is that uh, during the process, there was, uh, after injecting these DNAs into the other mice, we see that uh, for rough strain, there was the mouse lived at the end of the day. Then for the smooth strain, we saw that the mouse died. And then for the, where they killed the smooth strain, we saw that the mouse lived. And surprisingly, in the rough strain, and the heat killed the smooth strain, the mouse died. Quite interesting. And this is actually a big foundation of our now day-to-day -day understanding of transformation as a process of genetic transfer in bacteria. And to understand and explain this in details, let's look at what really happens in transformation. So transformation is genetic recombination in which a DNA fragment from a dead, degraded bacterium enters a competent, and the word here is competent, recipient bacterium, and it is exchanged for a piece of the recipient's DNA. And it involves four steps. The first one is a donor bacterium dies and is degraded. Then a fragment of DNA from the dead donor bacterium binds to DNA binding proteins on the cell wall of a competent living recipient bacterium. Then the recombinant A protein promotes genetic exchange between a fragment of the donor's DNA and the recipient's DNA. And once that happens, exchange is complete. That is transformation. And the key point here, dead degraded bacterium, competent recipient bacterium. And as, as explained, the process. I'll put here some illustrations, which I'm not really going to spend a lot of our time going through. 
but they are just basically showing what happens in the different uh, steps and I think that will be very quite interesting for you to look at. So that's really about transformation. The next process or mechanism is transduction. And in transduction is where you have genetic recombination in which a DNA fragment is transferred from one bacterium to another by a bacteriophage. I hope you understand what bacteriophages are. But phages are viruses. So if it is a bacteriophage, it's actually a virus that feeds on bacteria. So in this process, it's the phage that's going to facilitate the transfer of this genetic material from one bacterium to another. And the process will be completed. I hope that's very clear. So in transduction, key point is transfer genetic material between one bacterium to another mediated by a bacterial phage. Again, I not waste a lot of time trying to explain what happens, which step involves what, but I want you to know that there are uh, two types of transduction. I will explain what a bacterial phage is. But there are two types of transduction. We have generalized transduction and also have specialized transduction. In generalized transduction, a DNA fragment is transferred from one bacterium to another by a lytic bacteriophage. Lytic is the point here, lytic bacteriophage. That is now carrying donor bacteria DNA due to an error in maturation during the lytic life cycle. So in lytic, it means that once it attacks the bacteria, once its cycle ends, it actually brings about it being lysed, broken, disintegrated. So that is the generalized transduction. Then in specialized transduction, a DNA fragment is transferred from one bacterium to another by a temperate bacteriophage. That is now occurring donor bacterial DNA due to an error in spontaneous induction during the lysogenic life cycle. And in lysogeny, what happens is that the virus does not destroy its host, but it persists throughout the different processes of generations. So this is the, dif this is the difference. In generalized, there is lysis, there is lytic. In specialized, it is actually temperate. It is carried on in the different stages of the replication. Again, like I did in the diff in the earlier in the earlier uh, process on transformation, I've also shown here the different steps involved in generalized transduction. There are seven in number, and uh, they involve a lytic bacteriophage that adsorbs to a susceptible bacteria. That's the first step. Then in the second step. The bacteriophage genome enters the bacteria. After that, the bacteriophage head or capsid assembly around a fragment of donor bacterium's nucleotide, nucleoid by mistake. <laughs> we say to me, call it mistake, but I don't think it's a mistake. By <laughs> I think it is intended. Then the bacteriophages are released. Once they are released, what happens next? The bacteriophage carrying the donor bacteria's bacterium's DNA adsorbs to a recipient bacterium. Once it adsorbs, this bacteriophage inserts the donor bacterium's DNA. It is carrying into the recipient bacterium. And once that happens, the donor bacterium's DNA is exchanged for some of the recipient's DNA. Principally, that is what happens in generalized transduction. However, I've said there are two types. The other one is specialized. Again, I have put in some schemes here to show what happens uh, using these illustrations, and I think they can be better for some of you. I know some people are really interested in seeing these illustrations, so this will be of help to you. In addition to watching some of these videos, which have been uploaded multiple times. So what happens in specialized transduction? In this one, a temperate bacteriophage adsorbs to a susceptible bacterium and injects its genome. 
Once that happens, the bacteriophage inserts its genome into the bacterium's nucleoid to become a prophage. A prophage. I hope you understand what a prophage is by, the, by this time. Yes. Uh, during spontaneous induction, a small piece of donor bacterium's DNA is picked up as part of the phage's genome in the place of some of the phage DNA which remains in the bacterium the nucleoid. It's like uh, you pick this part, leave me with the other part. I think these things are, are quite advanced. Eh? Eh, they are quite advanced. So when that happens, the next stage is uh, as the bacteria phage replicates, the segment of bacterial DNA replicates as part of the phage's genome. I think you're trying to see this sequence now. Every phage now carries that segment of a bacterial DNA. And this process continues. So the bacterial phages adsorbs to a recipient bacterium and gets its genome. Then after that, the bacterial phage genome carrying the donor bacterial DNA inserts into the space the recipient bacterium's nucleoid. And once that happens, certain rain we know that the genetic transfer is complete. So, in summary, we have transduction, and I had already said that when we talk about transduction, we know the genetic transfer involving a fetch. And we have generalized transduction and specialized transduction. Generalized transduction, we have a light key fetch. In special transduction, we have temperate fetch. Uh, this is just a scheme showing what happens in those six steps. Then finally, the last type of form of net transfer between bacteria is bacterial conjugation. This is like what happens in the advanced organisms. Yes, like happens you involve a female, you and a male, there is a sex pillars formed, and then, yes, you know these things. Uh, so in the conjugation, is genetic combination in which there is a transfer of DNA from a living donor bacteria to a recipient bacteria. Uh -huh. It's like we, have, we are having couple, couples of bacteria. <laughs> it often involves a sexy pillars. And uh, there are three conjugative processes. And we have the one of them is the F plus conjugation. Then we have the HF for a conjugation or high frequency recombination conjugation. And finally, we have the resistance plus MIDI conjugation. And this third one here has caused the biggest problem. It's actually the next pandemic. If I don't know, if I'm not mistaken, it's already a pandemic, which results into resistance and microbial resistance. Is all the dose resistance plus midi conjugation. So I want us to briefly look at uh, some of these, uh, each of these three, and then we shall uh, call it a session. So what happens in F plus conjugation process? Here, there's genetic recombination in which there is a transfer of an F plus plus mid, coding only for a sex plus but not chromosomal DNA from a male donor bacterium to a female recipient bacterium. And it involves a sexy or conjugation pillars. So how do you tell which one is female and which one is male? Certainly the one which is passing on the, which is developing the pillars, transfer the genetic material and become the, the male. Then the recipient will be the female. Don't bring in those things of the other gender and what. No, we are talking about bacterium, they don't have gender. <laughs> All right. So, other plasmids present in the cytoplasm of a bacterium, such as those coding for antibiotic resistance, may also be transferred during this process. So, that's the F plus conjugation process. Uh, I've again shown here a scheme illustrating what happens where you have, uh, we see the male F plus plasmid coding for a sex plus and can serve as genetic donor. After that, we have the sex pillars adhering to a female 
don ephemeral recipient where one strata of F plus plus mid breaks. Uh, once that happens, the next stage is uh, to have the sex pillars retracting and a bridge is created between the two bacteria. One strand of the F plus plus mid enters the recipient bacteria. So when this happens, both bacteria make a complemented strand of F plus plus mid, and both are now F plus marrow capable of producing a sexy pillars. There's no transfer of donor chromosomal DNA, although other plasmids, the donor bacterium carries may also be transferred during the F plus conjugation. So this process of type of conjugation is actually passed on the ability to generate or have a sexy pillars, but there's no chromosomal DNA that is transferred. Yes. Uh, then after that, there is the other process which we call the HFR conjugation or high frequency recombination conjugation. So in this way, we have genetic recombination in which fragments of chromosomal DNA from a marrow donor bacterium are transferred to a female recipient bacterium following insertion of an F plus plus mid into the nucleoid of the donor bacterium. And this one involves a sexy or conjugation pillars. So I want to tease a little bit. We talked about the F plus conjugation, where we saw that we are actually only passing on the ability of the F plus sex pillars. And we said here we don't pass on chromosomal DNA. However, in high frequency combination conjugation, Chromosomal DNA is passed on. And uh, that means that we are in position to have this bacterium proceed with the process of genetic transfer not being abated. That's why it is called high frequency of recombination. What a question, by the way. <laughs> Yes, I've again put up some illustrations here. I'm not going to waste a lot of time trying to explain them, but they are self-explanatory. Please, at your free time, make sure you look through and understand. And there are five steps. And finally, like I said, this is the one which has given us the biggest headache. The resistance, resistant plasmid recombination. Here, genetic combination in which there is a transfer of an R, a plasmid coding for multiple antibiotic resistance and often a sex pillars from a male donor bacterium to a female recipient bacteria. And it again involves a sexy pillars. So basically, in conjugation, a sex pillars is involved. And the one which is donating is the male pride, the male bacteria. And the one that is receiving is the female bacteria. So principally, and I'll take some time to explain this, they are basically four steps, but they need to be understood. The bacterium is an R or, or resistance plasmid, is multiple antibiotic resistant and can produce a sex pillars. So it serves as a genetic donor. Then the sex pillars adheres to an F minus recipient. One strand of the R plasmid breaks, and once that breakage happens, the next stage is to have the sex pillars retracting, and a bridge is created between the two bacteria. One strand of the R plasmid enters the recipient bacteria, and once that is done, then we see that both bacteria make a complementary strand of the R plasmid, and both are now multiple antibiotic resistant and capable of producing sexy pillars. Like I've already said, this type of conjugation is the most complicated. It has caused us the biggest number of problems in the current world, and it's most likely to be the next pandemic, which may be may take us to the pre-antibiotic error. So please, people, carefully 
use antibiotics, let them be under prescription, and if possible, undertake the, the sensitivity tests before using them. Don't use over-the-counter. Don't misuse them. Uh, this marks the end of the genetic flow between the, within bacteria and the transform genetic information. However, like I showed us in the intended learning outcomes for this particular topic, make sure you recall very well what you studied much earlier about the structure of the DNA, structure of RNA, look at aspects of the genetic code, look at how transcription takes place, translation, protein synthesis. I want you to dedicate some time and read about the operon system. Because this is how we regulate gene expression in bacteria. And because of this, we can be in position to manipulate these bacteria and use them in whatever way we want. So this again takes me to the other internal learning outcome that you must understand. You look and look at resistance, I mean restriction enzymes, also called restriction endonucleases. I have indicated in your activities that you need to understand, explain restriction endonucleases. See what they are. How can they be utilized? What have we used them in advancement of medicine? Again, among that which you are going to learn are the plasmids, the different types of plasmids and how we can utilize them. Cloning vectors. You must also understand, in the same unit or topic, what we have called transposable genetic elements. In your elements, we have showed you, or we have uploaded a video showing transposable genetic elements. Try to look at these things. Synthesize them. Understand. And then to make life much easier when it comes to the real applications. It will not be as abstract as before. So having said that, and uh, coming to the end of our session with our references, allow me wish you a good understanding of this particular topic, excellent revision, discuss with your colleagues, watch those videos, write your assignments, make those write-ups perfect, and apply the things to how they are used in real day life. Other than that, life will be much, much interesting. You will like the topic and also enjoy this course unit. It's my pleasure to wish you a good next three weeks. And I also look forward to seeing you complete this unit successfully, doing our quiz assignments tests then the practice when you report back bye let's meet